Alhamdulillah wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ma ba'd We're going to talk about something very important which is tahara purification we've talked about it before but we always need uh, to go back over and be reminded about purification so when you make wudu what do you use you use fresh water good and that's very important so this brings up the hadith that we're going to read which has to do with fresh water that water let me ask you can you use water when we go to the sea you know and, and sit by the beach and stuff can we use that water for tahara no. she said no no yes. what do you say yes so we have one yes and two no's the correct answer let's hear what you said yes, you changed your answer. Good. Let's listen to the hadith of Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. An Abi Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fil bahar, huwa tuhurul ma'uhu al-hillu maytatuhu. Akhraju al-arba wa ibn Abi Shayba wa lafluhu wa sahahu ibn Khuzayma wa tirmidhi ruahu malik wa shafi'i wa ahmed. So this hadith was narrated by many hadith scholars. It was collected in their books. This was a hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and this is only the last part of the hadith. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, uh, when they were at the sea, uh, or about the sea, he said that the sea water is pure, its water is pure, and the things that are dead in it are halal. What does that mean, Sana? That means that you, if you go to the sea, Rashad, you can use the seawater. That water, when we go to the beach, you can make wudu in there. You can clean your mouth, your nose, everything, even if it has salt in it. You can use that water. Because the Prophet ﷺ was specifically talking about that. And there was a man, he was, he was telling his story to the Prophet ﷺ. He said in this hadith, this is the full hadith, uh, part of the hadith. He said, "Suila Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam al al-bahr, o kama qil." Qal, "Inna narkub al-bahr, wa nhamlu ma'na qalil min al-ma. Fida tawadna bihi atishna, afna tawadu min ma al-bahr." Fakal Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Huwa tuhur ma'hu, ma'hu al-hillu maytu." So the Prophet ﷺ was asked by a man. And the man told his story. He said, Ya Rasulullah, verily, we travel on the sea. Means that they're in ships. They were in ships. Even back in those days, they used ships. He said, we travel on the sea. And we take with us only a little bit of water. And he said, if we make wudu, we become thirsty. That means we don't have any water to drink because we only have a little bit. Can we make wa uh, wudu with the sea water? And the Prophet ﷺ said, he said, it is pure, the water is pure, and what has died in it is lawful, is halal. That lets us know that the sea water you can make wudu with. Rashad, can you make wudu with river water? Are you sure with river water can we do it? Oh, you're a little wishy-washy. You're not sure. Yes, any water, take this principle, any fresh water like this, you can make wudu with. So if it is the sea water, if you're in the ocean, if you're in a river, if you're in a lake, you can make wudu or you can ghusl in that water. As long as the water is moving and as long as there is no najasa that changes the color, changes the taste or the smell from najasa. Najasa meaning urine or ghayt. Uh, number two, if that changes the color of the water, if that changes the taste of the water, if that changes the smell of the water, then you can't make wudu with it. That's the general principle for any water. So for example, if you go to the bathroom, if you go in the bathroom at Karamakum Allah, and you have this water container, and it's, it has, drinking, uh, has water in it, and you want to make wudu, 
if you use the bathroom in a little bit, akramakum Allah, a little bit spills in there. A little bit of urine splashes out of the toilet or on the seat or whatever, and it drops in that container. Can you make wudu if that's full? She said yes. No. He said no. No. She said no. Okay, there's details, there's tafsil. <laughs> so no one was exactly correct. So um, the details are this. If that container of water did not change its smell, it did not change its taste, and its color did not change from the urine, you can still make wudu with it. Okay? Some of the scholars, and because uh, there is um, another hadith related to that it should be a certain amount of water, that if it's a little bit of water, they say even if a little najasa and it doesn't change it, it is impure. Some of them say this. Some of them say it doesn't matter. The, the, the main point is if it doesn't change its smell, its taste, or its color, it's still pure. Okay, so that is very important. What we learn from this hadith is that the water in the sea, Rashad, is najis or pure? Yeah. Is pure, means you can make wudu with it and you can ghusl in it. You can just jump in the sea water with your, your niya and make, clean your nose and your mouth and that's your ghusl, if you want, and then come out. You can go swimming in there and that's ghusl. As long as your niya was to remove the impurities and you uh, cleaned your nose and your mouth that's sufficient for a ghusl in the sea you don't have to wash your limbs or anything because you dove in the water everything your your whole body water has touched your whole body that's okay so we know that one of the things we gain from this hadith is that the sea water is pure another thing is that the dead things in the sea you can eat so that means it's halal. If you find a dead dolphin in the sea or on the beach, can you eat it? She said yes. He said yes. She said yes. Okay, yes, you can. If you find a dead fish on the beach, you can eat it. It's halal. It doesn't mean you want to eat it, but we're just talking about the ruling it's permissible to eat. But if it has a sickness or something, or you know, you see some, it's decaying, then you don't want to eat that. You could get sick. But it's permissible in Islam to eat the dead uh, sea creature. So if you find a sea turtle, you can eat him. Okay, because he lives in the sea and he needs the sea to survive. Another benefit we gain from this hadith is related to the whenever a person ask a question to a scholar or ask a question to a student of knowledge or ask a question to someone who's more knowledgeable than them that it's okay for the person to give extra benefit and extra details and uh, about the rulings in Islam it's okay for them to give extra details if they have knowledge about those details and they know that the person can understand it and benefit from that knowledge. Those are just some of the benefits that the scholars mention about this hadith. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.